Welcome back to part six of the world creation tutorial. This time we're going to go over lights. There are three types of lights within Neo, so we're going to go over all three. Bear with me, this video might run long. Skip around if you'd like. I will um, put some links in the, the description of the video to jump around to specific light types within the video. If you're interested in just one light type. Quick reminder before we get started, we're in the um, meeting space world by Mozilla Reality on Sketchfab. This is a meeting space um, designed for the Mozilla Hubs project. So uh, check out the link in the description for this world if you'd like to download the model and take a look yourself. Let's hop to Smooth POV and I'm going to turn on Private UI to spawn out a couple of tools which are used for lights. Inside your inventory you'll find the Essential Tools folder and inside the Essential Tools folder there are two light tools here. They're this one, which is a light tip with the ball on the end, and then here a light tip with the rod. Let's spawn both and close our inventory. I'm going to play with this one first. This is the um, light tip configured as a sun mover. So within the world root of each world there is a sun, and you can move it using this tool. So if I face the building wall here a bit, hold my trigger down, and then move my hand, you'll see here that I'm affecting the light within a world. I can also hold the trigger and then push the touchpad and it will change the color of the light. Let's go back to white. To see what this is doing, we're going to find the light within the world. So I'm going to turn off private UI. I'm going to equip a developer tooltip. I'm going to inspect the world route. And you'll see light here. This is the light source within the world that is the sun. Um, you always find it under the root. It's called light and it is type directional. And this is the first type of lights that we're actually going over, which is called directional lights. You'll see that the directional light is there inside the um, floor of the world. Directional lights apply regardless of where they are to the world um, globally. They're really powerful. They are uh, lights that come from sort of outside the map and shine a light in. And so regardless of their position within the world, um, they affect everything kind of globally. So with that selected, you can see the gizmo of the light. If I equip this light tip again, and I move the light tip around as we were doing before, you'll see it's rotating that light source. And that's what's happening here. The light points along the blue arrow to show which way it's going. When I do that, you'll also notice that the rotation values of the light here change. When I change the color of the light, you'll see that the color here changes. That's what the light tip's doing. Now that we know it's doing that, we can actually, um, if we don't want to, we can go ahead and edit these things directly in the inspector. So we could reset the rotation here, and then we'd have a default rotated light. Or we could change up the rotation and move it around manually if we have a very specific direction that we wanted. For example, there I rotated it so it wasn't shining in my face. Within the inspector, you'll see that there is a light component, and that's the component that drives all the light types. Um, you'll see here that they have the standard properties, persistent, updated, order, and enabled. Underneath that are the light specific properties. We're going to go over each in turn. Some are only applicable to certain lighting types. So here light type is directional and directional lights are sun. So those are the ones that are outside the map, shining light in, very powerful. Um, they have an intensity value. For directional lights, be very careful with this one. It can easily flood the world with light, but it's how powerful the light is. Color controls the color of the light. We were just playing around with that with the light tool tip. The shadow type controls if the lights have shadows or not. So if I turn this on to hard shadows and then grab my light tip, you'll see here that the building is now casting a shadow on this piece of floor here. There is um, also baked shadows into this world. Um, you can see here this darker patch of ground. Uh, so try not to confuse those with shadows. If I turn the shadows off, if I turn the shadows off again, you'll see that they go away there. So none. Hard. You can also do soft shadows as well, which adds a kind of blur to everything, um, makes it more natural so, um, looking. These shadows are all real time, and so be very careful when adding shadows as it can quite quickly give a performance drain to the, the world. Shadow strength here controls how strong the shadows are. So if you up this to 8, you'll see the shadows are a lot darker now. 
up down to one, they're kind of barely there. So we can go as high as one on there, and then they'll be very dark. Higher than one doesn't affect anything, so between zero and one there. The rest of these properties are more applicable for other types of lights, so we'll talk about those next. To set us off on equal ground though, I'm going to point the sun at the ground so it's not affecting any lights, and I'm actually going to go inside the building here. We'll need our other light tip, which is here, and we'll go inside the building. Inside the building here, you can see uh, I've got some stuff left over in the previous video, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And you'll see here that we've got, uh, again, baked lighting. So you'll see there's lighting um, in the roof there that is where those lights should be, and also a uh, kind of glow effect around the table. But that shouldn't affect us too much whilst we play out lights, because what I'm going to focus on is making the walls and also the table um, brighter or darker We're using various lights. So the next light type is the, um, is the point light. So I've equipped the light tip here, and it, by default, the ball one at least starts making a point tip. So if I hold this in the world and I click, it will spawn a light, which I can then turn on or off using the trigger. This light isn't really doing much to the world right now, and that's because there is another feature of the light tip, which is where if you point in the world, trigger, and then pull away whilst the trigger is being held, so trigger and then pull, it will affect the range that the light can apply to. Now point lights apply um, in a circle around the light for a range value. So here I've upped the range and you can see it's now lighting the table and also the wall in front of it. Let's inspect this light and take a look at some of the properties. So inspector, go to the root here, point light, and you'll see again there's a light here with the point type set. Intensity is the same, set it higher, it'll make the light brighter. Color is also the same. If we make it red, it'll make the light red. So now the table is red. Let's reset that to white. Shadow type again will make these shadows hard or soft. So I turn this on soft and then I go underneath the light here. You'll see real time shadows. Range here is how far the light will shine. It was set when I pulled down with the tip. So if I change this back to, say, 1, you'll see nothing's really being lit again. So we go back to that sort of 30-ish value. You'll now see it's lighting the room again. Spot angle is and cookie are more appropriate for the third types of lights. So that's the point light for you. I'm going to go ahead and delete this so we can create another light using the light tip. With the light tip equipped, you can open up the hand menu and you can select spotlight here. This will go between the various types of lights. So now we've selected spotlight. We can go back to point light with the hand menu and selecting point light. We can also go to move sun, which does that move sun tip with the rod. And so now we have spotlight tip uh, selected. Whilst I have the hand menu open, you can see here, we can also change the shadows and the color type here, right in the tooltip. So I can show you hard shadows and red, which will change this to red. Let's go back to white though. Now spotlights are exactly that, they're a spotlight. Think of like a flashlight or a spotlight you might see at a theater production or something. They are directional and they have an angle and a range. So if I go above the table, point my tooltip down and click and then drag, you'll see here we now have a circular spotlight on the center of the table. Let's inspect that spotlight. Oh, I got the world. There's the spotlight. Go to the root. And you'll see here, light type, spot, all the same properties, but there's also now these two other properties which may make more sense. There's spot angle. So if I uh, go out a little bit and change spot angle down to four, you'll see we have a smaller circle now. So it's how far the, the light is from the spotlight. So if I went up to say 120, oh, that was intensity, uh, spot angle, there we are, 120, you'll see now it's affecting the whole table, and then back to, I think it was around 40, we've got that nice clear circle here, that's spot angle, 
Cookie here controls um, a kind of think of it like a it's, it's a term in in, in lighting and as well as a uh, games um, cookie. So you just need to know the term. It's like a piece of paper put over the the lens of the light. We can do this in game with a couple of the particle images, but they need a slight adjustment. So I'm going to set one up now. So we're going to go ahead and turn private UI back on. I'm going to open my inventory, and I'm going to go to Neos Essentials, Textures and Sprites particle effects, shapes, and then I'm going to spawn this star image here. Now if I put this in the cookie, you'll see nothing's happening right now, although we do have a square. If we pull out this picture, we'll get the picture dialog. I'll go over pictures in more detail in another video. But what we need to do here is go color to alpha white. And then delete this one. And you'll see here we've now got a um, picture where the alpha has been made from the black area. And so you'll see here the light now looks like a star. And the brighter parts of the light are where the whiter part of the images is. So you can see here we've got white here and then going to alpha. So just imagine it as like a, a lens over the light. This also works with the color. So you can get some cool effects whereby we've now got a nice shiny red star in the center of our table. All of the particle effects should uh, shape should work with those. You just basically need an image where the alpha means don't shine light and the um, white means do shine light. So that's the uh, directional light with the sun, the point light with the points, and the spotlight with the spots and the cookies here. There are a couple of things left over to go over, which are the inspector properties. So, oh, sorry, not the inspector properties, the inspector gizmo. So when you've got a root of the light selected, you'll see that there's this, uh, let's get this picture out of the way, there is this um, additional gizmo button here. So if we select that, you'll see we get properties here. So we can change it to soft shadows, hard shadows, no shadows. We can change the type of light, whether it's enabled or not. We can also open up the settings here. The settings controls the intensity, the shadow strength, all within this UI. We can also change the color here. So we can go back to white, drop the intensity. You'll also see that there is a circle dome, which uh, represents the, the light's um, influence in terms of the, um, the, the spotlight here. If we go out of the map here, we can also um, drag this around so we can pick up one of the rings here. So maybe the, oh, so maybe the end ring here. So we can go to the end ring here and we can, uh, we can pick that up. And if we bring this closer, it changes that angle property. And then here with the central, the central rod, we can push that and change the range so we can bring this all the way up here. Uh, we're still not in the room. Let's go back into the room. Oh, it didn't like me when it did that. So we're going to shine it at the table, and then we'll uh, open that settings menu and increase the intensity. And then up that uh, range again. There we go. And so now you can see that we can move the light around using these. I swear you used to be able to remove the central ring I'm remembering. Oh yeah, yes, there we go. So we can move it around using just the just the dev tool tip. So here we can shine a light on the um on the wall here and drag it around. That also works with the other light types. So you can change this to a point light. And now you'll see there's another UI where we can change the range and also I think the there's another dial somewhere it looks like it's only a range for this one if we change it to a directional light oh gee um, this is what I mean about being careful I'm gonna go over here for a second light intensity one Whew. um let's go back 
So here you can see that there's a one yellow arrow and you can control the direction here with that. The cookie's still being applied, but I don't advise applying it with a directional light because we've got really bright stars going on. I'm going to lower that intensity more. Uh, intensity. Okay. Because as it's a directional light, you can see we've got stars here, but we've also got stars here, like just all throughout the world now. That's the lighting type, so I'm actually interested to see what happens with the cookie when we do a point light. Looks like they don't work with point lights, that makes sense. I advise using them for uh, spotlights, as that's the one where it makes sense, you can see the, um, the films they put over spotlights on stage production sometimes. So those are the three types of lights, um, showing you how to use them in the inspector and in Within the World. Um, there are a couple more things to do. Um, I'm going to go ahead and delete this light and then create a collection of point lights. And that's because there is a handy um, lighting wizard that you can use. So if you open up the uh, dev tooltip and you go to create new, you go to editor world light sources wizard. Here you can affect all of the lights within a world. So here you can set their shadow type, you can change their intensity. So we say 0 0.2, now they're all darker. Or up to 1.5, change intensity. Uh, they're all brighter again. You can also enable and disable them all. Like enabling isn't working, maybe that's a bug. I'll turn them on manually, I guess. There we go. We can also uh, destroy them all. Shh. It hasn't destroyed. It destroyed the light, but I don't think it destroyed the visual here. Yeah, it destroyed the light component, but it left behind the the visual. Probably some some bugs there to look at. That's the um, light wizard. I'm going to leave this dialogue up here because the other thing I want to talk about is once you've placed your lights, please turn off the visual here. So you can go to the visual and turn this off. And what this means is now that there's no floating ball in the world, the light just appears here. So if you had a lamp that needed to be a point light, then um, turn off that visual so that the lamp looks like it's, it's, it's giving the light, not the, the weird floating ball in the air. You can also turn that back on again if you need to. Let's turn that back on again for my final tip, which is organization. Um, like one of the other tutorials in this series, the uh, one where we went through how we organize a world, I recommend that you put all of your lights under a object called lighting. Made an object and then we can drop all the point lights underneath it. And the light tip as well. I actually know the light tip's the tool. Okay, lighting. And the reason behind that is so that you can find all the lights really easily and you can also turn them off and on really easily. You could group lights into rooms and turn them off based on light switches this way as well. So if you had a grid of, of point lights within a room and you had a light switch at the front of the room, you could just turn off this top level organizational slot and it would turn off all the lights in the room. To so keep things organized and you'll be able to find them. That's it for lighting. Um, I think with that we're um, done with lighting in this world as well. I'm going to probably um, put some point lights in the ceiling here off camera and then I'll go ahead and publish this world so that you guys can take a look around um, and play around with it. See you next time. Um, I'm not sure what's next but um, I'll be there if you're there. Leave some comments in the comment section if you have any questions. I'll speak to you soon.